So, test tomorrow. Is there anything on the reviews that stumped you? Or do you just want me to go through what's on the test? Yes. Yeah, solving the equation ones. Uh, yeah, I just want to make sure that I'm getting my All right, I will do that. Um, I do want to make sure you guys are good with, because there is going to be um, lowercase questions on the test versus uppercase. We have to know the difference between these. When it's lowercase, what do you have to give? All the answers. So, what's your reference angle? 30 degrees. What are the two quadrants where sine is negative? Third and fourth. So, 210, 330. And you have to add the plus 360 in. When it's uppercase, what does that mean? One principal value answer, right? So this one, again, it's 30 degrees. For sine, what's the negative quadrant? Fourth. And remember, you're, are we allowed to write 330 for this one? No, you're not even allowed to pass through the restricted quadrant. So the answer is negative 30 degrees. And yeah, if you put 330, it will be wrong. So principal values. We said sine is positive in the top two, but what are the principal values? First and fourth, right? So your answers have to be between negative 90 to positive 90. What about cosine? Top two, so principal value is the top two, which means your answers have to be between 0 and 180. And then tangent is positive first and third, but what quadrants do we use? First and fourth, which again means your answers have to be negative 90 to positive 90. What about your reciprocal functions? Cosecant is the same as sine. Secant is the same. Cotangent is top two. It's not the same as tangent. So be careful doing those because when you solve a problem like principal value inverse cosecant of negative two root three over three, the answer to this will be the same as the answer to the reciprocal question. So the inverse sine of negative root three over two, which would be negative 60, right? But if you had to do an inverse cotangent of, say, negative square root of 3, so you think, all right, well, the reciprocal is inverse tangent. Reciprocal of square root of 3 is root 3 over 3. The answer to this would be negative 30. Is the answer to this negative 30? The answer to this would be 150, because you got to be in that second quadrant. Yes? So, the first half of the test are going to be these types of questions. Um, how do you find the inverse? Swap the x and the y, and then Solve for y. So add the 3, divide by 4, and then square root the whole thing. Easy enough? No. Why? Why do you do that? The short answer, I'm lazy. I, it has been a tough year. But see, no, the short answer of why I don't do multiple choice tests is I'm lazy because 
the test booklet that came with this book that has all the pre-made tests, they're good tests, and none of them are multiple choice. And I don't really feel like typing up a whole new test just just to make it multiple choice. Just, yeah. I do. I do take bribes. I, it's got to be good. All right. And yes, be prepared to do questions like, what is the tangent of the inverse sine of 1 plus the inverse cosine of... Let's do a half minus the inverse sine of negative a half. How would you do that? Where would you start? What's the inverse sine of 1? When does sine equal 1? 90? When's cosine equal a half? 60. Minus, when's sine negative a half? Careful, principal value. Negative 30. So I gotta do minus a negative 30. Uh, what's 90 plus 60 minus a negative 30? That's 180. And then you have to take the tangent of 180. What's tangent of 180? It's in your quadrant. If it's in your quadrantals, zero. Huh? Well, we're only doing. We only did six sections. Six questions on the test. Don't get one wrong. They're worth one point. I mean, I could do it. I could, I could honestly do a, probably a two-question test on this and be satisfied that you know your stuff. It's either pass or fail at that point, though. I think we should do it one Yeah, it's a little, a little risky. Especially when you get to questions like these. That would hurt. That would hurt quite a bit. Uh, you'd be squirting that boundary now. For the marking period, for sure. Semester, you'd probably be all right. Yeah. Now, just like we showed on the quiz, there's a lot of room for potential problems on these. So you've got to be real careful when you do these. Quadratic formula is always there for you, but this one factors. What does this factor into? Well, two numbers multiply to cosecant, or two. Two cosecant and one cosecant. And then two numbers that multiply to two. We have to subtract to get to three. So I would go two and one, because that gives me four and one, right? I gotta end up with a positive three, so the four has to be positive. So we got cosecant can equal negative two and cosecant can equal one half. When's cosecant gonna equal a half? Same place sine is gonna equal two, which is never. This one, when does sine equal negative a half? So these are all gonna be lowercase, but I don't need you to write the plus 360 ends. So 30 degrees, what two quadrants? So 210 and 330. We good? Does anybody want me to read answers from the homework? Which one? 15? 15, you should have 56 in 304, and then 111 and 249. And yeah, when you put them on the test, it might make my life a little easier if you put them in order, but it don't matter. 
It could make your life a little easier if it was multiple choice. You know, I'm not a big donut fan. Just not. They're all right. There was donuts down in the teacher's lounge for Teacher Appreciation Day, and I didn't even go down there. Skipped out. I'm good. What else you got? Okay, let's do 15. So 15 says 5 cosine squared minus cosine minus 1. Is that going to factor? No, sir. So cosine is going to equal negative of b, which is 1, plus and minus the square root of b squared, which negative 1 squared would be 1, minus 4 a c all over 2a. So you're going to get 1 plus and minus the square root of, what is that, 21? Over 10. Did you get that far? Okay. So now we grab the calculator. Make sure. At this time, we are going to um, begin the AP testing for the day. So um, bells will be turned off, and there will be no announcements made during um, testing time. Um, and at this time, also those students that will be taking the AP test today, please report to the media center at this time. And um, also for the other students, the media center will be closed until testing is complete. Thank you. All right, so first got to do 1 plus the square root of 21, right? Divide that by 10, inverse cosine. Pay attention to what you're inverse cosining. That's a positive, so cosine is first and fourth, so 360 minus, right? So first got to do that. There's your two answers, right? Then we got to do 1 minus the square root of 21, get that answer, divide that by 10, and then we got to inverse cosine that. Well, I'm inverse cosine and inverse cosining a negative. So how do you get, so cosine second and third, how do you get from the second to the third? 180 minus and then plus 180, okay, so 180 minus that, and then add the 180. So your there's your four answers. Good? Anything else? I gave you the 2 through 7 on the next page because I didn't think there was enough practice on the first half of the chapter in that first 1 through 15, so I wanted to make sure you did a little bit more. It would not be a bad idea if you did the rest of it. I didn't give you number 1 because I think you got how to do inverse stuff, so I didn't think that was a big deal, um, and I didn't give you like 10 and 11, those kind of problems because... I think you've had a decent amount of practice of those. Would it be a good idea for you to still look at those and try those? Absolutely. But, you know, didn't want to just throw you, load you down with a bunch of practice. So I do highly recommend you do look at those, but test tomorrow. That's all I got.